So welcome. I know it's a, it's a very uh, difficult time in Afghanistan. So um, I'm glad you're here. And I look forward to answering all your questions. Uh, sir, my name is Salman Javed. And I'm going to look after Youth Forum. And uh, uh, the purpose is that we public diplomacy in the domain. We start to interact with mm -hmm. people. And in that, we established a media corridor. We established a media corridor. We started a media fraternity. 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 टॉप टीयर के और सेकंड टीयर के जो जर्नलिस्ट हैं, उनको यहाँ लाने में कामयाब हुए। ज़मानुम रबिया सरदे द खबरियालियम। थैंक यू सर फॉर योर टाइम। माय नेम इज़ मोहम्मद इब्राहिम मुमान एंड आई एम स्पोर्ट्स जर्नलिस्ट। मानना है जो इस्तानबुल सहार के में अफ़ग़ानिस्तान राग्लेम द खबरियालान और डाले Assalamu alaikum. My name is Farid Azim. I am the director of Afghan Cinema Association. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Irfanullah and I present, uh, represent business community and I am industrial in Kabul. Assalamu alaikum, sir. My name is Dr. Salma Malik. I am uh, a teacher at Qaeda Azam University, Islamabad. I am part of the mentor group of the PEYO. Assalamu alaikum ji. I am Dr. Shabana Fiyaz. I am uh, heading the Defense and Strategic Studies Department, Kaidazim University, and I'm also part of the Park of Khan group. Assalamu alaikum, sir. My name is Shahid Khan. Uh, I'm the uh, uh, member of the Park of Khan Youth Forum, and uh, I'm coordinator for the Afghanistan at Park of Khan Youth Forum. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm Reema Shaukat, and I am part of Park of Khan Youth Forum. I am looking after the media and outreach in Pakistan for Park of Khan Youth Forum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Shufa Siddiqui. I am director of ZAN TV in Afghanistan. Assalamu alaikum. Mm -hmm. My name is Asad Kusha. I am the chief editor of Kabul now. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Zahra Siddiqui. I am presenter uh, for uh, Ariana News TV. Assalamu alaikum. Zamanu Freydundi, the Tulu News Khabari Alim. Um, thank you for having us. It's an honor to be here. I'm Shahrazad Kufi. I am the director of uh, an unprofit organization in Afghanistan. I'm also a coordinator with the Pakistan Afghanistan Youth Forum. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Mirwais Nouri. I'm an Afghan journalist the Pak, uh, the Afghanistan New Bansar Gwan Madwati Masul. Okay, Jim. Go on, go on questions, Karaga. One question is that uh, this is injected in Afghanistan, the people of Afghanistan, that, uh, uh, India and Pakistan are part of the uh, problems in Pakistan, Afghanistan. So have you ever tried this president or government of these three countries to sit together? I haven't seen anything like this. We have uh, uh, bilateral uh, uh, visits, but I didn't see any trilateral uh, meeting India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. And my second question is about uh, uh, sports. Uh, you are iconic in the region. Uh, uh, there is any plan of uh, sports activities from Pakistan side in Afghanistan because you have implemented so many projects in Afghanistan, but nothing about sports yet. The issue with India, the problem we face with India is that on, uh, on the 5th August uh, 2019, India unilaterally discarded the the uh, United Nations Security Council resolution and took away the statehood of Kashmir. Now, in 1948, there were two resolutions that the people of Kashmir, through a plebiscite, they would decide whether they want to be part of India or Pakistan. Since that right was not given to them, uh, the, the people of Kashmir have since then struggled to get that right, and Pakistan has backed them. But on 5th August 2019, India took away that statehood, that special status of Kashmir. So from then onwards, Pakistan has broken off all diplomatic relationship with India. And unfortunately, until they restore that statehood, we cannot really have a, a trilateral talk, which means India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. I have been to Afghanistan. Uh, I have good relationship with President Ghani. And uh, our own relationship, uh, 
has been very good, except that recently there have been statements from Afghanistan which, which basically accuse Pakistan of what is happening there. And it's very unfortunate because we feel that no country has tried harder than Pakistan to force the Taliban to get on the dialogue table, first with the Americans, and then trying to get them on, on a dialogue table with the Afghan government. But no country has tried as hard as we have. And this has been verified by the, uh, by the focal person, the United States focal, focal person, Zal Khalid Zad. Uh, sports. Frankly, I haven't had time for sports in these uh, last three years. There have been so many other issues. Uh, but what I can say is that I don't think any country, I know the history of cricketing world, no country in such a short space of time has improved in cricket as Afghanistan. It is, you know, someone who understands cricket, I can tell you this is un unheard of. Countries that have reached the status of Afghanistan have been playing cricket for 70 years. The Afghanistan cricketers have basically learned their cricket in the refugee camps here, which is last 40 years, so it's remarkable. میان حکومت ملکی پاکستان و حکومت نظامی پاکستان توافق وجود داره به خاطر از اینکه بارها حکومت ملکی پاکستان از افغانستان حمایت خورا اعلام کرده و گفته ما امرشان همکاری میکنیم ولی در عمل چون این چیز نبوده امی سوال ماست تشکر there is a feeling in afghanistan and, and unfortunately this feeling is deliberately being perpetuated by india that Pakistan is controlled by the military establishment. All the policies, foreign policies, that my government uh, has made have been part of a, of a manifesto. They have been part of a manifesto for the past 25 years. I have, whatever foreign policy I have had has been part of my uh, uh, party's manifesto. So I always believed that there was no military solution in Afghanistan. I always believed that eventually there will, be, there will have to be a political settlement in Afghanistan. It's exactly what I have been saying for 15 years, what I've been saying since I've been in government for the last three years. The Pakistan army fully supports the government. I always wanted her to have peace with India. The Pakistan army has fully backed all my uh, initiatives towards India for peace. It's India that refuses to have peace because India today is controlled by the RSS ideology, which is anti-Pakistan and anti-Muslim. And it is shown in what they have done in Kashmir. And if all you have to do is see what happens in India to the Muslims, the cow vigilantes who kill Muslims in the streets never get convicted because they are supposed to have eaten cow. And the suffering which especially Muslims, but also other uh, minorities like Christians, they feel because of this Hinduvta, RSS ideology. Uh, that is the, what is uh, coming in the way of us peace with India. So, but the army has, the Pakistan army has stood by my government in every way. There is no difference. So now we come to Afghanistan. The country, and I repeat, the country that of all the countries in the world wants peace in Afghanistan is Pakistan. Why? Because number one, if there's peace in Afghanistan, then Pakistan is connected right up to the Central Asia. We have already signed a contract, uh, signed an agreement with Uzbekistan for the Mazar Sharif uh, Peshawar Railway uh, through Afghanistan. So all our future economic uh, Economic strategies depend upon peace in Afghanistan. That's number one. Number two, the people of Pakistan have always think of people of Afghanistan as probably, you know, if not neighbors, as our brothers. And they have suffered for 40 years of strife. And so we feel that if any country needs peace and quiet, it's Afghanistan. Thirdly, uh, the, if this civil war goes on between the government and, uh, and Taliban, it will almost certainly spill over to Pakistan's tribal areas. 
And we have really, in the, uh, the last time when we joined the American War on Terror, and as a result, we had a, the, the, the American War on uh, Terror spilled onto Pakistan's tribal area, 70,000 Pakistanis were killed in that. So the last thing we want is that civil war spilling over into Pakistan, which it will do if, if it is a protracted civil war. And finally, we already have 3 million Afghan refugees. We cannot afford, if there's civil war, there will be more refugees coming in. And Pakistan does not have the economic conditions to, you know, to have another influx of refugees. So it is in our interest, and that is why Pakistan has tried its best is trying its best for a political solution in Afghanistan. Uh, thank you so much for your time. سوال مهی هست که میخوایم پرسون بکنم در ارتباط با حملاتی که فعلا طالبان در رسولیای افغانستان انجام میدن و کارهایی که اینو انجام میدن وارد خانه های افغان میشن. آیا از نظر شما این گروه کارایشان چیگونه است؟ غیر انسانی هست یا گروه تروریستی هستن طالبان؟ آیا ایرا شما میپذیرن؟ و دیگه ای که در این اواخر آیا اجساد پاکستانی را شما کشور پاکستان دریافت کردن از افغانستان تسلیم شده باشند؟ نظرتان در این ارتباط چی هست؟ و با چون این شرایط نتیجه روند صلح را در افغانستان شما چی گونه میبینین؟ منحیث یک کشور خیلی نزدیک بر افغانستان. تشکر. First. What the Taliban are doing or not doing is, is nothing to do with us. You know, you have to uh, speak to Taliban about what they're doing. We are not responsible. Uh, neither are we some spokespersons for Taliban. But you have two choices. 20 years, a military solution has been attempted to bring peace to Afghanistan, and that's failed. Now you have a choice, either this American-backed military solution, you can continue because if, if you feel the Taliban are, uh, are not someone you want to have in part of your government, you can keep on the, the, uh, the course of a military solution. But everyone knows it's not possible anymore. The second solution is to have a government, a political compromise between the Taliban and and the government to have a, 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 a compromise, a, a, an inclusive government. That is, and that is the only solution. Now, what the Taliban are doing or not doing has nothing to do with us. All we want is that there should be peace in Afghanistan. Pakistan's interest is peace there. There are, there are three million Afghan refugees in Pakistan. Almost all of them are Pashtuns. And all of them, uh, or most of them, would have sympathies with Taliban. How is Pakistan supposed to check who is going over there to fight or not when there are tw about 25, 30,000 people who cross every year, every, every day, they go into Afghanistan and come back? How is Pakistan going to check that? So Pakistan has consistently said that if, if the Afghan refugees go back to Afghanistan, then hold us responsible. But if there are three million refugees here, how can we say few hundred or, or few people have gone there to fight and uh, their bodies are coming back? How can Pakistan be held responsible? There are refugee camps of 500,000 people. There are refugees with over 100,000 people. So how is Pakistan going to go into the refugee camps and decide who is pro-Taliban and who is not? So it's not possible unless and, and, and let me just say the other thing, that until recently, there was no border between Pakistan and Afghanistan. The Duran line was just imaginary. There was no physical border. So to stop, uh, to control the outflow and inflow into Pakistan, we have built this fence at a huge cost to Pakistan. We have completed 90% of the fence now. So which, for the first time, you have a border fence. Before that, there was no border anywhere. There were, during then was no border. So we are trying our best, but it is not possible to hold Pakistan responsible when you have uh, three million, over three million people, um, refugees here. What interest could possibly Pakistan have in a civil war in Afghanistan? What 
interest would Pakistan have in backing someone to take over Afghanistan? What is clear is that no one party will be able to take over Afghanistan. So if Taliban try to take over Afghanistan, it'll just be an ongoing civil war. Um, in the past, Pakistan did have an interest. In the 90s, Pakistan had an interest. And why did Pakistan have interest? Because Pakistan had this policy of strategic depth. What was strategic depth? Pakistan was always wary of Indian influence in Afghanistan, and Pakistan did not want to have a situation where it was fighting on two fronts. So Eastern Front, India, and then Afghanistan also became pro-India. So in those days, Pakistan did try to have favorites. They backed favorites. Now, and especially my government, we believe that Afghanistan can never be controlled from outside. You, Afghanistan has a history. Throughout history, Afghanistan, Afghans are the most independent people. So you can't control Afghanistan from outside. So our government's policy is, whoever the people of Afghanistan choose, we will, Pakistan will have best relationship with them. So we have no favorites now. We do not have that old policy of, of the 90s of strategic depth anymore. یاو تاسو ولسمشر غنی سره په ازبکستان کې لیدلی وو او وروسته دغه د افغانستان او پاکستان اړیکې خراب شوې دغه لیدنو کې تاسو څه ویل او بل د سلسله لې خیل په اسلام آباد کې برمته شو دغه قاضي په اړه کې معلومات ورکوي چې دغه د چا له اختطاف شوی وای برمته شوی وای ولې برمته شوی وای د چې دلیل له مخې ډېره مننه فرست تینګ از د Whatever I'm telling you, I told President Ghani. I told him that Pakistan, you know, President Ghani felt that, you know, these, we should try and stop the, uh, uh, the people going across. Uh, we told them that we can have a joint, uh, you know, we, we will have a joint inspection. You tell us where people are uh, crossing, we will take action. We assured him about that. Um, because we know that all the fighting people, if half of Afghanistan is, is with Taliban, why, what would they be doing in Pakistan? Uh, they talked about families of Afghans, uh, of, of Taliban in Pakistan. The question is, what should Pakistan put their families in jail? What is Pakistan supposed to do with their families if they're here? Um, and then, if there are few Taliban leaders who have families here, the only leverage we have is, is because of that. The re reason why, they actually had talks with the Americans, uh, and Pakistan was able to make them have talks with the Americans, was because of this leverage. If you put them in jail or if you take action against them, that leverage goes. But more importantly, I, f I got the impression that somehow the Afghan government feels that we should take some sort of a military action against, force the whoever the Afghan or, you know, who, who the few pro-Taliban people or Taliban leaders are here. But what, so number one, we do not want, we will do everything, but we will not use military force anymore in Pakistan. As I said last time, we were fighting someone else's war and we ended up uh, 70,000 Pakistanis were killed. So there is a consensus in Pakistan that we will not use military action. Short of military action, we will try our best, whichever how, how, how much ever pressure they want us to put on the, uh, on the Taliban, we will, because it is in our interest there's peace in Afghanistan. But we will not use military means. This is, we are clear in Pakistan about that. The ambassador. So, you know, we have detailed now, through the safe city cameras, we have detailed, uh, charted out the exact uh, uh, path taken by the, uh, the daughter of the ambassador. And, you know, we, we uh, the taxi drivers, the, the taxis which the uh, ambassador's daughter took, we, we got the, through the cameras, we got the numbers of the taxis, we called those people up, they've all been interrogated, they have, uh, so unfortunately the explanation doesn't tally what the, uh, the ambassador's daughter says and what the cameras show, where, where the, where she says that she was put in a taxi and taken away and they was beaten up. 
but there is a picture of that taxi and she's sitting there and she's, she's fine. And the driver was called up and the police officer showed. So unfortunately, uh, we didn't get the answers because the police has now all the record, charted all the areas where she went and it doesn't tally with what her accounts are. There are two, there, there's a discrepancy there. And unfortunately, they went back, so we, we have no way of uh, confirming what happened. But uh, the account of, of the ambassador's daughter does not tally with all the, the cameras which show her going into the three different taxis. The taxi drivers were interviewed, uh, got into the police station. It does not match there. Uh, yeah. Afghan government has requested for a uh, team to visit Pakistan for sharing this investigation and we have uh, conveyed our confidence uh, to, for that team to visit next week. So, so, we, so you've heard that the, uh, uh, there's a team coming from Afghanistan. We will give them all the information they want. We will give them the pictures from the, uh, the, 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 the safe city cameras, exactly the movements and so that they can uh, go and uh, ask the questions to the daughter when they go back. می خواهیم سوال داشته باشم در قسمت پروسه صلح افغانستان این که پاکستان بارها گفته که ما در قسمت پروسه صلح با افغانستان صادق هستیم و همکار هستیم پس مراکز مشورتی طالبان فعلا در قلمرو پاکستان نشان دهنده چی است تشکر وی هاف کنسیستنتلی آس دی افغان گورنمنت ٹو ٹیل اس وی دیز شوراز ار اینڈ وی دی ہبز ار سپوزڈلی وی دی طالبان ار سپوزڈ ٹو بی uh, you know, we kept hearing about this by, by when the Americans were conducting operations. There were drone attacks in the tribal areas. There were Americans were, uh, you know, killing people through drones. Uh, so w why didn't they spot this, uh, this Koita Shura and so on? Because we've always asked them to tell us where these, uh, where this Koita Shura and so on. The thing is, if if the Taliban meet within the Afghan uh, refugee camps. As I said, one of the refugee camps is over 500,000 people. There's another is 100,000 people and so on. So it's not easy for Pakistan to tell them exactly, you know, who's coming and where. Uh, so, you know, we, this has been asked over and over again. And uh, let me just in the end say one thing. The reason why 150,000 NATO troops, the, the greatest military machine in the history of mankind, the reason why they did not succeed in Afghanistan has nothing to do with Pakistan. It's exactly what the Americans ha did in Vietnam. When they failed in Vietnam, they blamed you know, some insurgents from Cambodia or Laos, and they actually bombed Cambodia and, uh, and completely uh, destabilized Cambodia, but they still didn't make any difference. We were told at one point <clears throat> that the Taliban main sanctuaries were in North Waziristan. They kept pushing us that we should take action in North Waziristan. Finally, after four or five years, Pakistan actually took action in North Waziristan. One million people were internally displaced from North Waziristan when Pakistan took action. One million people were displaced. Some Pakistani soldiers lost their lives. They, they, they were, the, the whole area was cleared. But what difference did it make? This was in 2014. It ma made no difference at all. Nothing happened. I mean, it's not that suddenly the NATO troops won the war in Afghanistan. It not, nothing happened. So you know, this blaming uh, for a flawed strategy Surely the Americans should have started talking to the Taliban when, from a position of strength. When there are 150,000 NATO troops, that was the time to talk to them. Talking to them when there's an exit date given and when there are a few thousand troops left, how do they expect that Taliban would now compromise? The time to make them compromise or a political settlement was when there was, they, they were in a position of strength. Half the Afghanistan is in Taliban, and why do they need Pakistan now? 
که امریکا لطفا سنا گفتن او که در پاکستان دخواهد یا افغانستان پخواهد که پوزی عملیات وکی آیا تاسی در پوزی عملیات و یا هوای عملیات و اجازه ور کوی؟ او دوام سوال در افغانستان و پاکستان در رابطه سیوس خراب سیوی دیدی او قبلا سنجار زوی؟ Now my question is that what will the Americans achieve operating from Pakistan? What they could not achieve in 20 years operating from Afghanistan? I don't know. If someone can convince me that suddenly it would make a big difference and there will be peace in Afghanistan by them op op operating from Pakistan, maybe we would consider it. But what they haven't achieved in 20 years, how do they expect to achieve right now from Pakistan having bases there? All it will do is it will pa involve Pakistan in a conflict which, ha which Pakistan has nothing to do with it. So why would we want another conflict on our hands when already when we were fighting the U.S. war on terror, we lost 70,000 people, over $150 billion lost to the economy. Why would we want to get ourselves in another conflict? So that's the reason why Pakistan sees absolutely no reason for them to have bases and operating from within Pakistan. Future relationship within, with Afghanistan, I see uh, I see our uh, uh, relations between the two countries will get stronger with every passing year. And the reason is that Afghanistan needs Pakistan, Pakistan needs Afghanistan. Uh, no country would benefit more from open borders than Pakistan and Afghanistan. Because Pakistan would benefit from access to Central Asian markets. They are emerging markets, they are growing very quickly. There's an ener energy co uh, corridor as Afghanistan from Central Asia, so we will gain from it. And Afghanistan, of course, has a huge Pakistani market of 220 million people, and then a port, Gawadar port, and, 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 and of course, uh, uh, Port Qasim. So, uh, so it's a mutual, mutually beneficial relationship. And we, you know, people don't realize that uh, Afghanistan was part of Pakistan and India for a long time. And then there was a time when uh, what is Pakistan, North Pakistan, was part of Afghanistan for, for 70, 80 years. So there's a strong linkages between the two countries. And I think that once this uh, the, uh, situation calms down in Afghanistan, and which we pray it calms down very quickly, then I think we will have probably the best years of our relationship. Normally, I'm not a media journalist. I'm a cinema So that's why we work social media. And alhamdulillah, this is the problem that is now bad with politics. Social media has no effect. We can do this here. We can do this here in Pakistan. But my personal question is, when I was born, ہر بار مجھے یہ کہا گیا ہے کہ پاکستان کے ساتھ پاکستان کے پاس ایک پریشانی ہے افغانستان سے پھر میں یونیورسٹی گیا اور ادھر میرے کو بلا گیا کہ یہ پریشانی داؤد خان کے زمانے سے شروع ہوا ہے میں یہ جاننا چاہتا ہوں کہ یہ کون سا پریشانی ہے جب اتنی سال ختم نہیں ہو رہا ہے تینکی دیکھیں جو ملکوں کے اندر ریلیشن شپ ہوتی ہے نا وہ کبھی بھی ایک جگہ پہ جا کے نہیں آڑ جاتی وہ چینجبل ہے ڈائنامک چیز ہے ایک ایسی ہے کہ کئی دفعہ شخصیت دو آ جاتی ہے ملک میں ریلیشن شپ بہتر ہو جاتی ہے اور ایک شخصیت کبھی ایسے ہیڈز آف سٹیٹ آتے ہیں کہ ان کے ریلیشن شپ خراب ہو جاتی ہے کئی دفعہ انٹرس پدل جاتے ہیں ایک ملک کا ایک دم انٹرس پدل جاتا ہے لیکن جو بیسک چیز افغانستان اور پاکستان میں ہے وہ کہ دیکھیں ایک تاریخ ہے کئی سو سال کی تاریخ ہے جو یہاں یہ سارے خطے میں انٹریکشن تھا یہ جو پشاور تھا یہ سینٹر تھا کابل سینٹر ہوتا تھا سارے سلک روٹ تھی یہ یہاں سے سارا جاتا تھا ہندوستان ادھر سے آتے تھے پھر کندہار سے روٹ تھی ملتان کے ذریعے یہ پرانی ٹریڈ روٹس ہیں اور پرانی ریلیشن شپس ہیں کتنی افغان فیملیز وہاں سے آئیں پاکستان سیٹل ہو گئیں میری ساری ماں اور باپ کی قبیلے سارے افغانستان سے آئے تھے یہاں سارے ہندوستان میں سیٹل ہو گئے کتنے سو سال پہلے تو یہ انٹریکشن ہمیشہ رہا ہے اس میں کبھی کبھی 
اب برا وقت آتا ہے افغانستان کا انٹرسٹ ہو گیا افغان امریک سوویٹ سے پاکستان کا انٹرسٹ چلا گیا امریکہ کے ساتھ اس کے اندر ہماری ریلیشن شپ خراب ہو گئی پھر آئی حکومت افغانستان کا ہندوستان کے ساتھ قریبی ہو گیا تو ظاہر ہے پاکستان سے خراب ہونی تھی ریلیشن شپ لیکن لانگ ٹرم ریلیشن شپ نیچرل ریلیشن شپ ہے ہی پاکستان اور افغانستان کی اوکے جی تھینک یو